Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the first mini lecture of chapter seven. Um, this chapter is uh, split into two parts. The first part we're going to talk about is going to be dealing with energy, uh, thermodynamics, um, redox reactions in preparation to get us ready for cellular respiration. That's going to be chapter eight. The second half of chapter seven is dealing with enzymes, which are also very important for understanding what's going to be happening in chapter eight. So you can think of chapter seven as kind of like a foundational chapter, getting you kind of bringing you up to speed on some of the, the information that you need to have a good understanding of before we can actually start talking about cellular respiration and what's going on in the mitochondria. So this first little mini lesson is about energy. We're just going to talk about some generalizations of it and how we can apply it to um, the cell and what we're going to be talking about with that. And if you remember from chapter two, I think, when we were talking about atoms and molecules at the very beginning of chemistry, <clears throat> you should have read something about matter. Matter was anything that has mass and takes up space. So solid, liquid, gas, those were the states of matter. When we talk about energy, energy means the ability to do work. Um, so it's not something tangible. It's not a solid you can't touch energy, but energy can do stuff to that matter. So for our purposes, a lot of times the energy that we're going to be creating or using is going to be used to move things within the cell. It might be moving uh, ions across a, a membrane like an active transport or moving something within the cell from one place to, the uh, to another. So that's the kind of energy that we're going to be looking at. <clears throat> we can classify energy in a couple different ways. Um, so the first kind of categories that we want to talk about is kinetic versus potential energy. And there's a little pendulum uh, animation here. If we take a look at that, it's going to stop pretty soon. So I wanted to address that first. So the total energy of the system is the green bar. And then if you'll notice, the red kinetic energy goes highest when the pendulum is swinging. And it is lowest when the pendulum comes to that temporary pause at the end of each one of its swings, and in that, the potential energy is the highest. So just by looking at the animation, you might be able to conclude that kinetic energy is the energy of movement, and potential energy, where it stops, right? <laughs> we have no kinetic energy anymore, and I can't restart it. The potential energy is the highest. So uh, kinetic energy is the energy of moving things, and potential energy is what we call stored energy, the potential to do something. Um, so we have a couple other examples we can use for this. So the bicycle and, uh, example here, as you are pedaling up a hill, you are putting in energy. It's an energy input, and it's kinetic energy because you are moving your bicycle. When you're paused at the top of the hill, you've put in energy to go against the gravity gradient, if you will, going to the top of the hill. So you have stored energy at the top of the hill. When you roll to the other side and you just start going over the hill, you can coast without putting any energy into it because you've already done that to get up to the top of the hill but now you can let the energy out and it is also kinetic energy because it's the energy of movement so we have kinetic energy in to get you to the top of the hill which is your potential um, and then once we ride down the hill we are converting that potential energy into the kinetic energy um, out of the system when we go down to the bottom of the hill. And once we're at the bottom of the hill, we don't have, we're at equilibrium. We, have, we are at gravity equilibrium, if you will. Um, the other example here is a bow and arrow. So the tautness of the, between the bow and the bowstring, if you pull on that, think of like a rubber band even, that is potential energy. You're putting kinetic energy into stretching the string. Um, and so that's gonna be kinetic energy. And then once it's pulled back, you have potential energy because you've stretched that rubber band or the, the bowstring. And then when you let go, that potential energy is converted into kinetic energy with the arrow flying and the string kind of going back to its equilibrium, to its equilibrium state. <clears throat> so this is a big kind of big picture idea of energy. Kinetic is movement, potential is stored. So just kind of take those definitions with you. Once we start applying this to cell biology, when we're talking about cellular respiration, we will see these terms used again, the potential energy of stored energy and the kinetic energy of the energy of movement. Okay. <clears throat> Another type of ener energy that we could um, talk about is mechanical energy. 
So mechanical energy is this kinetic energy that actually causes things to physically move. So I give a few examples of the picture here of the woman doing a weightlifting um, exercise. So the energy stored, the potential energy stored in her muscles will be turned into the kinetic energy of an actual a mechanical action of the lifting of the weight. We can see the pumping of the heart in a biological example where we have the stored potential energy and the chemical bonds in the muscle are converted to the mechanical energy of the pumping of blood through your body. And then a non-biological example would be like a piston um, and a cylinder in an engine where we have the stored chemical energy of gasoline is converted into this kinetic mechanical energy of pushing the piston, which will then spin the crankshaft and make your vehicle go. So that is a type of kinetic energy is a mechanical force kind of doing the work, right? This is energy, the ability to do work. We are working on the weight, we are working on the blood, we are working on the piston. All right, <clears throat> so mechanical energy is more tied into kinetic energy, where chemical energy is more connected to potential energy. It is stored energy. And there's, I give you a few examples here. The most obvious uh, type of stored energy is what comes from photosynthesis with the sun's light coming in, plants or green organisms have the ability to do photosynthesis. There goes my cat's tail. Thanks, kitty. Um, so the light's coming in. <laughs> Sorry, she had to jump down. So the light's coming in, uh, giving these photosynthetic organisms the ability to convert carbon dioxide, uh, which is a very simple molecule, into, right, so carbon dioxide is turned into sugar, which is a more complex um, molecule. And basically what we're doing is we're converting the radiant energy of the sun into chemical energy in the sugar, and it's stored energy. It's a potential energy. So we see that stored in starches and oils and things like that. So we all have food that we eat. If we're following our kind of food chain idea, our producers are the organisms that can convert the sun's energy into chemical energy. And then we have the consumers that are going to eat the plants, which will then convert the energy that's in the plants to stored chemical energy in the animal tissue. And then if we consume the animals, um, then we would also get that energy. And then this example down here is the gasoline example. Gasoline is stored energy. And where does gasoline come from? Well, gasoline is a big hydrocarbon. We saw that back in chapter three, a whole big long chain of carbons with a whole bunch of hydrogens attached to it. So that's a lot of chemical bonds where you can store a lot of energy. So where does where do those hydrocarbons come from? Well, you think about what gasoline is, it's a fossil fuel. So who are the fossils? Fossils are the remains of dead living things, right? Mostly plants. So the fossil fuels that we are burning currently are the remnants of all of that sugar that was trapped and stored in the plant material millions of years ago from the sun. So you are burning basically million year old sugar from plants that are dead and then got compressed and turned into the hydrocarbons in a um, fossil fuel petroleum product. Pretty interesting, right? Okay, so this is a short little lesson. So it's, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there as to the difference between kinetic energy and potential energy. Um, so kinetic is the energy of movement <clears throat> and potential is stored energy. And then the mechanical versus chemical, mechanical energy is like a kinetic energy <clears throat> and chemical energy is our stored potential energy. So what we're gonna be seeing when we get into chapter eight is what is the way that our body extracts energy from the food that we eat and converts it into a good storage potential energy for our cells so they can do what they need to do. All right, I'll see you next time.